This video is an introduction to graph minors. Um, so a minor is a containment relation, sort of like how subgraph is a containment relation. <clears throat> um, so a minor of a graph is like a smaller version of that graph where you have only certain allowable moves. Okay, so the regular um, definition is a minor h of a graph G is obtained from G by any sequence of the following moves. We're allowed to delete a vertex, and we're allowed to delete an edge. And those are, remember, those are our moves for making a subgraph, right? If you want to make a subgraph, you're allowed to delete a vertex, and you're allowed to delete an edge. And now we're going to add in a third kind of move, which is something called contracting an edge. <clears throat> okay, so we're allowed to do our previous two types of things, right? We can delete stuff either vertices or edges, and now we're going to allow contraction of edges. So let's see what this means. So let's consider this graph here in green, and we're going to contract E. Okay, so when we denote contraction, um, the notation for this is a sort of is a forward slash. So G forward slash E, that means to contract, and a backslash E would mean to delete. Okay, so <clears throat> the idea for contracting an edge is essentially you just want to shrink this edge down and then eventually these two vertices are going to meet, right? As the edge shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, you can imagine this one vertex sort of being sucked towards this one. And then these two vertices are going to merge and become a single vertex. So let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> so whenever you contract an edge, nothing is going to happen to any of the other vertices. Okay, so let's start by drawing the other vertices in the graph that have nothing to do with E, right? These are all the vertices in the graph that have nothing to do with E, and none of their edges are going to change at all. So these are all the edges between um, these vertices. And then the rest go to these two vertices that have either the beginning or the end of E. <clears throat> so what you can do is you can sort of just make one of them the representative. So in this case, I'm just going to let this one be the representative for both. So these two edges are going to stay the same because we didn't delete this. But now this vertex got sucked into this one. Okay, so this edge E disappears, and this vertex becomes the same thing as this vertex. So what's going to happen is this edge gets dragged up. Right, like as this shrinks, this edge that used to go to this vertex is now getting dragged up to this vertex when this shrinks up. So this is G contract E. <clears throat> okay, and I've got a quick note here. The degree of the new vertex obtained by contracting the edge UV has degree, degree of U, plus degree of V, minus 2. Okay, so let's go back and look at this in our example. So here we had our edge, um, and they're not labeled, but we could just say this is U and this is V. <clears throat> and then this is this vertex is not really um, either of U or V, but it's some new combination of U and V. So if you think about what degree this new vertex should have, it's going to have all the edges that were adjacent with, you know, all the edges that were incident with U are going to be adjacent to it, and all the edges that were incident with V are going to be adjacent to it, but you have to subtract one from each of these, right, because E was contributing one here and one here, but now E is going to be gone. So this formula that says it's the degree of each vertex at the end minus 2, that minus 2 comes from the fact that we're throwing away that edge that we contracted. So, our formula says the degree of W should be equal to the degree of U plus the degree of V minus 2, so that's 3 plus 2 is 5, minus 2 is 1, 2, 3. Okay? So let's see this some more. Um, let's contract E and F, so now we're going to contract two edges in G below. So first let's think about G contract E. Okay, so again, none of these vertices that, I mean, these vertices that don't have anything to do with E, you can just draw all of them in. So here's our this triangle. <clears throat> now, we don't want to draw these two in the middle because they're related to E, but then these two on the side have nothing to do with E, so we can draw them in. Okay, 
So this edge here represents this one, and then this triangle represents the triangle on the left-hand side. And now again, you can just choose one representative. So maybe I'll choose this top representative to be the representative for these two vertices, right? Because now these two vertices are going to turn into one vertex. So I'm just going to let draw that vertex here. <clears throat> and so both of these ended up going to that vertex, right? Because they were going to the top vertex originally, here and here. And then this edge F, right, is going to be here in our graph. And then the edge that used to be going down to this, right, is getting sucked up. When this edge gets contracted, this edge, instead of going down, is really going to get sucked up to this vertex. So it's going to be a parallel edge like this. And the same thing that's happening with this edge down here. It used to be going down, but now when this vertex is slowly sort of shrinking towards this one, it's going to get sucked up to that edge and create another parallel edge. Okay, so this is what we get when we contract E. And then if we want to think about G, contract E, contract F. So now we've already got G, contract E, and we want to contract F from this graph. Okay, so again, we think about our vertices that have nothing to do with F. So that's these two. And then we'll think about these two on the far side. And then these two are going to get sucked together and become one. Okay, so again, you can just choose one to be your representative. Maybe I'll take this one to be my representative. Okay, so I'll throw that in there. And now all of these edges that were there before are going to be in there, right? So that's this piece of the graph. And now this edge used to be coming to this vertex, but now it's going to get pulled over to this vertex, right? As F sort of shrinks up, it's going to get pulled over to that vertex. So that edge is going to be this edge. And similarly, this edge, which used to be going to the left side of F, right? The left vertex of S is going to get F is going to get sucked over. And then the only question is, what happens to this edge, right? The one that used to be parallel with F. Well, if you think about, right, like this one getting sucked over, right? This one is going from this vertex, and it used to be going to the left, but now instead it's just circling back, and it's going to end up being a loop at this vertex. Okay, so it's totally fine to get multiple edges or loops when you do contractions. They're, I mean, it's sort of common that you do get them. So this is the graph that you get when you contract E and contract F. Okay, so this will take a little bit of practice to get used to. Um, so a minor is something that's obtained via deleting an edge, de deleting some edges, deleting some vertices, and this new operation of contracting some edges. <clears throat> also, um, let me just make a note here. If you were to contract a loop, then really that's the same thing as just deleting this loop, right? Because its endpoints are already the same. So you can't make them more one in, more one vertex. They're already just one vertex. So deleting a loop is the same as contracting a loop. Okay. <clears throat> so another note, G is always a minor of itself, right? So if you remember our definition of minor, it was any sequence of those moves. Well, it's possible that you just don't do any of those moves, right? I mean, so... You can have an empty sequence of moves, and that would still give you a minor. So we have a special name for a minor where you actually do something, and that's called a proper minor. So a minor of G is proper if it's not isomorphic to the original graph G. So that means you did actually delete or contract something. Okay, so now let's think about a slightly more complex example to end this video. So this is a common type of question. Does a graph contain a specific minor? So does G contain a K4 minor? So remember, K4, we have two sort of ways of thinking about K4. There's this. This is K4, um, but this is also K4, right? And these are just different drawings of the same graph. So where we want to know, can we take this graph here that's sort of magenta, and can we delete vertices, delete edges, contract edges? Is there any sequence of those moves that will end up with one of these pictures? Okay, so you may want to pause and think about this for a second. 
uh, and then we'll answer it. Okay, so the answer is yes, it does. So let's find it. <clears throat> so let's begin um, by trying to identify it in the graph. Okay, so when you look at this, this is kind of a jumbled mess. But what you're thinking of is you're trying to find some really interconnected pieces, right? I mean, like these vertices are all supposed to go to every other vertex. So you're trying to find four vertices in this magenta graph um, that all sort of have paths from each other um, to each other. Oh, well, actually, the current graph as it stands does not have a K4 minor. I forgot to add in this edge. So let me add this in really quickly. Okay, and now it has a K4 minor. So if you were confused about that, sorry. Okay, so let's identify it. So maybe, can you see, now that I've added this edge, where our K4 is going to be? It's going to be... So here is the sort of outside of this picture. Right, and you can see that there's the sort of inside of these, that, that sort of degree three vertex on the inside. Okay, so let's actually just do the sequence of moves that will get us here. Okay, so let's start by deleting V7. Right, in our picture we sort of identified that it was V1 and V3 and V4 and V9 that we want to end up with. Now that doesn't mean that we can just delete everything that's not in there, um, but let's see what happens here. Okay, so first, remember if you delete a vertex, you delete all the edges associated with that vertex as well. So now this is going to give me... this picture, right where this is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, we deleted V7, here's V8, and here's V9. Right, so we deleted this vertex and these three edges, and that's just a simply like erasing them. Okay, so then we end up with this, So now you can think about, um, let's contract V6, V5. Okay, so that'll give us this picture. Right, where this is our new contracted vertex, and then here everything is the same. Okay, and I'm not going to label these vertices, um, if that's okay. Uh, well, I guess I should label them, the ones that aren't contracted yet. So V3, V4, this is V9, this is V8, and this is V, uh, I'm just going to call it 5, 6. It's our new vertex that we got from contracting 5 and 6. Okay, so now let's combine a couple of moves in one. So we'll delete that new vertex V5, 6 and the vertex V8. Okay, so thinking about our previous picture here, we're still going to have one and two and three and four and 9, right, so this is V1, V2, V3, V4, and V9, and now we scrapped this one, right, V5, V6, and we deleted V8, which got rid of that edge as well, right, and so then what's the last thing we need to do to get our K4 minor, right, you might want to think about this for just a sec, 
Well, we can't just delete V2 because that would delete these two edges as well. And we don't want to delete those edges, right? We want to just sort of make, we want to shorten this to just a single edge. So what we're going to do is contract. You could do either V1, V2 or V2, V3, right? So we're going to just contract V1, V2. And I'll let V1 be my representative. So that means I'm going to sort of like suck this vertex over towards V1. when I contract. So here is V1 comma 2, our new vertex by combining V1 and V2. This is V3, this is V4, and this is the original V9, and now this is K4. So, this does have a K4 minor now that I added in this handy little edge that I forgot at the beginning. And we did only those three moves, right? We deleted a vertex, we contracted an edge, we deleted a few more vertices, and we contracted another edge, and we ended up with K4. So every single graph in this sequence, right? So this one, this one, this one, this one, these are all minors, right? These are all minors of this original graph. So, right, <clears throat> we delete a vertex. That gives us a, a proper minor. Then we delete another, uh, or then we contract an edge, and that gives us a minor, right? Because as long as you continue to do these moves in the approved list, delete a vertex, delete an edge, contract a vertex, each new move just gives you a new minor, right? And in fact, as you go down this list, you're getting a whole chain of minors. So this graph is a minor of the one here in magenta. And then this graph is a minor of the one in magenta, but it's also a minor of this graph from step one, right? And then this graph is a minor of the graph in step two, right? Because we obtained it from this one just by deleting some vertices. It's also a minor of the graph in step one. It's also a minor of this graph that's in magenta. So as you continue to do move, you just get this whole string of minors, right? And they're all sort of minors of one another until you wind up at K4. Okay, so this has been our introduction to graph minors.